Monte Carlo, one of the oldest games in the world, probably over 2,000 years old, and played in Africa, Asia, Europe, and now in the US. It's played in many different ways. It can actually be played on a board or on the ground. You don't really need a board, but you can use two rows of holes. You could have four rows of holes. You could have many holes, many more than this. And you don't have to use three stones. You could actually use four stones in a hole, or five stones, in as many as you like to start, as long as it's even. But actually, the way I prefer to play this game is a very simple version like this. But you can start every time you play it by changing it slightly. So we would take, for instance, one stone out of here and put it there, and do the opposite over here. So we would take one and put it there. Or we could take all of them out of one and put them elsewhere, spread them out. So each time you play, as long as it's equal on either side, you play with a different number of stones. And that takes away learning patterns. It makes it a lot more challenging. Anyway, let's start this game as we would for a beginner. The object of the game is to win the most stones. This would be my winning hole, and this would be yours. This is your side, this is my side. I would pick up all the stones in any one of my holes, and play them subsequently counterclockwise. Since my last stone I played ended up in my winning hole, my Mancala you might call it, I get a second turn. I could pick up these stones and play them subsequently again. The next rule says if the last stone I play ends up in an empty hole on my side of the board and there are stones opposite it, I would capture them. Now it would be your turn. On your turn, you may pick up your stones and play them sequentially again. And your last stone ended up in your Mancala, you get a second turn. You could pick up these, and you would capture these. Remember the last stone in an empty hole you, that you played, and there are stones opposite it, you capture them. So there's a way to capture stones. Now, in this situation, I could, for instance, pick up all these stones and play them my turn. Now it's your turn. Let's say you pick up these stones, which would be a very smart move, because you would go one, two, three, four, five. You played your last stone in your Mancala, so you get a second turn. You would pick up this one, place it there, and of course you capture those. So you're already ahead of me. If I play these stones, and we've, I have no s stones left on my side of the board, I've left out a number of steps, obviously. The, g let's, the game would be over in this position. However, I am not the winner by having the least number of stones. The winner is determined by counting the number of stones you have in total. So I would only have these stones in total. But your total would include all these stones and any remaining in your side. And in this case, obviously, I would uh, be defeated. So, thank you. The word Utini actually comes from the Swahili meaning pardon as an excuse me how did you make that move I wanted to make a artistic version of this game as I think of this as my functional art and so actually this game is more than just a game it's a piece of art you can lift the board up and have a storage space to store your stones and you may place it back in this way there's also another game here this game is called Utini. And this is really a straight ahead game similar to backgammon. And we'll get into that a little later. The symbols actually represent traditional uh, motifs, historic motifs. They all mean something in particular. And the definitions are actually on our website at dreamgreen.org. Let's get to the board itself. The frame of this game I hand carved and it depicts Scenes from Africa. All four sides are different. We have a water pattern here, looks like a rope pattern, and same over here. The animals, of course, we've got hippos and elephants and African hearts and a giraffe and eagle. Symbolically, the uh, Victoria Falls, uh, hippos, a little bird on the back, and a crocodile. On the other side of the board, we have more of the grassland animals. We have a baboon, a lion some zebra, a rhino, uh, a uh, wildebeest, African buffalo, uh, a kudu, and an antelope being chased by a leopard, or it could be a cheetah. On this end, 
the top end of Africa, you have Egypt. And actually the word utini, which we said earlier meant pardon, as an excuse me, is carved in our hieroglyphics. So we have the Nile and the Sphinx and the pyramids and the sun with the little hands on the ends. The other end of Africa is where I grew up, and that is Cape Town and the southern end of South Africa. And here we have Table Mountain, the city, the ocean with a whale and a boat in it, and a hospital. In fact, that main hospital is there, and it is called Cruetescue, and that is where the first heart transplant in the world was ever done. The instructions are located on the back of the game. The uh, animals in the background, the elephants, were actually painted by my younger brother, Philip Green. And he still lives in Africa. Utini, part of the Moncala Utini combination in this set, is a straight ahead version of backgammon. You actually each player starts with 12 pieces, and in this set you'll find 12 stones of the same color. In this case, there are 12 green ones, and then you have an assorted number of stones, as long as you can tell the difference between the pieces. The object of the game is to get your 12 pieces, player one, across the board and off before your opponent can get across and off. You throw dice to move. Even dogs can play. They're really good at this game. So it's very simple. Mop, would you like to throw the dice? You want me to start. Okay, that's fine. I would throw the dice to start. And in this case now we have a 5 and a 4. I could move one piece forward. 1, 2, 3, 4. I could also move another piece forward. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and double it up. It's very important to try and keep your pieces doubled up since your opponent cannot land on you and send you back to the start. With one piece in the square, your opponent landing on your piece with a, with a full count of one dice at least would send you back to the start. Obviously if you're in the middle of the board and you lose seven squares, that's the equivalent of the average of two dice. The other player now would throw the dice and if they threw a double, in this case, like fives, they would miss a turn. And so would go on. In this case, double ones. I'm not lucky, very lucky, are they? Okay, three and a one. So they could go ahead one, two, three, and you could move another piece up one. So you can separate the, the, the stones with the dice, or you could go up three, and then you could go one with the same stone. So that's practically all the game. Very simple, very straightforward, and the symbols actually all mean something in the definitions on the website.